Welcome to part 35 of the Rick and Morty app series. We're going to pick up where we left off. In the last video, we put together an app icon as well as that launch screen. In this video, we're going to start building out the locations tab since it is indeed the last tab that we haven't gone ahead and started building for. So without further ado, drop a like down below, hit subscribe, and let's jump right in. So we have a view controller for this already. It's called the RM Location View Controller. And in Xcode over here, it looks like we've got a bunch of these uh, files open. So I'm gonna just close them out. Makes Xcode a little more snappy and we'll come to the Location View Controller. So particularly what we want to do in here is because we used a Swift UI view here, we used a collection view for episode and characters. I want to go and use a table view for location so we can uh, illustrate how to use those. That being said, before we go and build that view out, let's take care of looking at what a location gives us. So getting locations, it looks like once again, we have info makes sense. And each of these locations has a name, a type, looks like a dimension on it as well and then we have a residence so it looks like we're going to want to once again go and using a dispatch group or some sort of mechanism figure out uh you know who who lives at this location and presumably these are just like characters obviously because they are the character endpoint so cool let's actually figure out how to do this we are going to want a table view and once again instead of putting it in the controller let's open up the views folder and inside of views, what I will do is let's create a subfolder in here. So let's right click and do a new group. We will title this location and we're gonna create a new file. Coco touch class, it'll be a subclass of a UI view and this will be an RM location view. And I'll just call it location view instead of list view since I think that name is perfectly fine. Go ahead and create it, get rid of the commented out stuff in here, go ahead and finalize the class, bring in a override of the init with frame uh, initializer. You'll also want to override the init with coder initializer. And inside of here, we want to have our table view. Now, before I do that, I will set a background color to make sure we can see this view when we just add it to our controller. We're going to use constraints, so we'll assign that property there to false. We will go ahead and add a constructor uh, comments here for the initializers, and then up here we'll add a table view. So a table view is simply going to be table view of type UI table view, big surprise. Inside of here, we will create it. And I should mention, um, if you're not familiar with table views, I do have several videos on them, but a table view lets you basically do what collection views let you do, but they're a little less flexible such that uh, the actual cells need to always be vertical. I guess in theory, you can make them horizontal, but that would be incredibly hacky. So let's go ahead and say, uh, register a cell just like we did for the collection view. And here we are going to set a identifier of simply cell. Let's go ahead and add this as a sub view. So we'll say add sub view. We want this table view here. And we're gonna want a spinner in here as well, just like we did in all of our other views while stuff is loading in. So I'm gonna say private let spinner UI activity indicator indicator view is what I'm looking for. I kind of wish they would have named this something like UI spinner. I feel like spinner is such a simpler term versus activity indicator view, but I digress. This is why I am not in charge at Apple of naming. So here we'll say spinner dot, uh, let's do spinner dot translates, auto resizing mask into constraints will be false. And here we want to also add the spinner as a sub view. And when the spinner is uh, hidden, we will say, uh, hidden on stop or something like that, hidden when stop. That's what it's called and we want that to be true. This table, we also should have this be uh, a alpha of zero, meaning opaque. And we also want it to be hidden by default. We'll fade it in like the collection views on the other tabs once we actually get some data. And let's start actually animating the spinner. So we'll say start animating and add some constraints. Let's create a function to add constraints here. 
and then we're gonna actually run our app to make sure we can actually see this spinner. So here we'll say NS layout constraints, activate for the spinner. Let's go ahead and do this first. We'll do spinner dot height anchor will be a constant. So I'll say constraints equal to a constant of 100. And 100 is kind of a number I just made up. So if you're ever wondering how I know these numbers, there's actually like no right premise. Just choose a reasonably small number that isn't, uh, you know, like super small. So that's how we will do the spinners, height and width. I'll also say that its center x anchor will be to the center x of its container, aka the current view we're inside of. We also want to do the center y anchor, so this will also be, also be vertically centered. And the table view is pretty simple as well. We'll just pin it to every single side of the container. So we've done this in several views at this point, so top, left, right, and bottom. We're gonna use copy and paste because that's every programmer's best friend. And we'll do bottom anchor, beautiful. Bottom, left, and right. And before you go ahead and run it, don't forget that we need to actually create this view and add it on our location view controller. So let's jump into our location view controller here. And inside of here, we'll say that this is our primary view. We'll create it. And I will call out that you could also override the load view function and actually assign the view to be this view directly. But I prefer personally to have it be a separate sub view and then just add it. There's some pros and cons to both, but it is a little subjective and out of scope from what I want to cover in this video. So um, cool. So we've added the view here. Let's add constraints. We'll say add constraints and define a function down here for that. Now remember, this is going to be our red view. So once again, we'll say NS layout constraints, activate, and we can cheat a little bit. And if we come into the view, what we really just want to do is grab, we can actually grab it from any place, but we just wanna pin this primary view to all four sides of our uh, primary view to all four sides of the view controller's view. So this should be good to go. So let's give it a run make sure we see that red view in the location tab with a spinner in the middle beautiful we do and this brings us to the point where we can start uh, actually creating the view model and getting some data so I will jump into the view and get rid of the red color I'll go ahead and actually just make it the system background and we can choose to have the view model directly in the view but in this case we'll keep it in the controller so let's go ahead and say that this is the lifecycle functions and here we'll say this is the view model rm location view view model now we obviously need to create this we haven't defined it anywhere yet so open up that view model folder close up all these tabs and create a new file for yourself it'll be a swift file and just paste on in that name for the view model and define a class or struct here don't forget to include an initializer if you do in fact have uh, this as a class. And let's actually create a mechanism in our view to configure it with the view model as well as a mechanism to fetch locations. So back in our view, we're gonna add a public function and we're gonna say that this is configure with a view model. We'll paste in the name of that view model We'll want to hold this view model in the global scope of our view so we can actually access it when we need it. Inside of here, we'll assign that view model once it's passed in as a parameter. And once this is assigned, what I can actually do is we can perhaps tell our table view to reload data. So we also want to hide the spinner. So we'll say uh, stop animating, which will also stop uh, or hide the spinner. We will say table view is hidden is false. We want to then say table view, go ahead and reload your data. We haven't implemented that data source yet. And then we'll want to actually animate in the uh, table view. So we'll say animate with a duration, 0 0.3 seconds. And the thing we'll animate is the table views alpha property to one. So in other words, it's not opaque at all anymore. It's 100% um, visible. So awesome. Now that we've done this, the last thing I'll touch in this video is inside our actual view model, what do we need? So let's think about it. We want 
to be able to uh, fetch locations. So we're going to say fetch locations. We are also going to want to hang on to those locations. So here I'll say private var locations will be a collection of rm location. And this should not be viewed, just rm location, which is our model. Just like we had for our uh, actual response for characters and uh, characters and episodes, we are going to create a response for locations and we're going to want to hold on to location response info and this thing will give us the next url for pagination will contain next url if present and what else do we want we want some view models so we're just going to say this will be cell view models this will be for the table view i'm just going to make them strings for now since we don't have a type for that we're going to say public uh, var we will make it private for now we'll say private var uh, can fetch or should has, let's see what I should call this, has, I'll call it has more results, will be of type bool. For now, it'll just be false, but this is how we're going to check if we should actually be, uh, if we should actually go ahead and load more results. And the last thing I'll do is, since we're doing pretty good on time, is I will actually go ahead and uh, set up this request. So to fetch locations is particularly simple. We want to create a request, which will be an RM request. And the endpoint we want to create it with is simply locations. If you want to be a little more uh, swifty, which you can actually go ahead and do here in RM request, if we jump to it at the bottom, it had added an extension where we can copy and paste this. This can be a list locations request. And this kind of just abstracts the constructor so we can use the uh, we can use the actual uh, static reference. So what we can do is say RM service shared, and we're gonna say execute list locations. We expect to get something back. We haven't created it yet, so I'll stick a string in there, and this will be results. We will switch on said uh, result here, and we'll pause the video here and simply just break in our result here. So cool, this is a good stopping point. We've created our view model for the view. We stubbed out our view and actually put our spinner and table view in here. In the next video, we're gonna actually get our table view working and we're gonna get some results to show up. But for now, before I leave you guys here, let's go and give this a run. We should have that spinner here in both light mode and dark mode looking pretty nice. And let me be a good developer and actually commit and push my changes. So we'll go to desktop. We'll go into the folder. I will stage everything. I'll attempt to give it a good commit message this time. So what I'll go ahead and call it in here is uh, start building out locations tab. And finally, give it a push. Just make sure you spell everything correctly. Otherwise, it will yell at you. Okay, awesome. So thanks again for watching. Drop a like before clicking away. Subscribe to the channel if you are new here. Uh, if you are new to iOS in general, congrats. You've come a super long way. Give yourself a round of applause, and I'll see you in the next part.